Now, let's get some laws. Let's show you what you should be doing. Because this is what the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man should be doing tonight. This is what you should be doing with your time. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. Well, hold on, hold on. We're going to stop right there. So the Bible said six days you got to do your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right. So this Sabbath day is not for everybody. You understand that? This is our day with our God that he gave to us. And that thing that we are supposed to do in it. Right? So read. We're going to show you the first tenet of the, of the Sabbath. In it thou shalt not do any work. So we shouldn't be working today. When the sun goes down and the Sabbath begins, we should have finished all of our work. That's what the Bible commands the Israelite man, woman, and child to do. Right. We should do all our work. Read. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant. And we messed that up. You know what that implies? We used to have servants. Right. We used to have servants to serve us. And we were commanded what to do with them. So now, we, as the children of God, must keep this commandment of not working on the Sabbath day. And we must command our wives, our women, and our children. Right. Nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, excuse me, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. So that is one of the, that is the first holiday that he gave his people. He gave us the Sabbath day. You understand? So we're supposed to rest on that day because God hallowed that day. So that's what we, he rested, we rest. Now, let me ask you a question because we're surrounded by churches. What day of the week is the first day? What's the first day of the week? I'll Sunday. What, what day is the first day of the week? Sunday. Sunday. Exactly. So, what day do most of our people go to church? What day do most of our people get dressed up and go to church? On Sunday, right? That's the first day of the week, correct? What day did the Bible say that God ordained as the Sabbath day? You remember what it said? Let's read it again for my brother. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, uh -huh. and rested the seventh day. Rested when? The seventh day. Rested when? The seventh day. So the Bible, my brother, said that God rested on the seventh day. Right. But if our people are going on the church on the first day, are they with God? Or are they going against God? If God say go on day seven, but they're going on day one, are they doing what God said? Or are they going against what God said? If they go on the, if, if God says, I want you to go on day seven. If you tell your children, I want you to show up on the seventh day. And they don't show up on the seventh day, they show up on the first day. Did they do what you told them to do? They didn't. Right. If you said, I want you here day seven, and they're like, man, I, I'll be there. I'll be there on day one. i get there on day one. Did they do what you said, do? No. So when the pastor tells you, I'll see you next Sunday, is he telling people to go with God, or is he telling people to do what he said? Right. What his, his, his slave masters taught him, because that's what we learned uh, church on Sunday. Right. We learned that in slavery. Right. That's how you know that we are still in slavery. You know one sign that the black man is still in slavery? One sign that the black woman is still in slavery? They show up in church on the first day of the week, every week. Right. Just like master told them to do. Teach. But we are the children of God and he said go on the seventh day. Now get no buying and no selling. 
since we right outside this store. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. So the Bible said that on the Sabbath, which is going to be when the sun is completely out of the sky, that begins the Sabbath day. Right. That begins the Sabbath when the sun's completely down. So our people right now, they got some time. But you know what? Because those churches aren't teaching our people the laws of God. Right. When the sun is completely down, you know what they're going to continue to do? Go by. Right. We just read in the Bible that when the people, the nations who are not our people, came around us on the Sabbath day right. to sell us stuff because they don't care about God. Right. How you doing, my sister? Do you know what today is about to be? I don't. Do you go to church, sis? Not now. Did you used to go to church? Yeah. What day? On Sunday. On Sunday. Now, what day of the week is Sunday? It starts off the week. So what day is that? One, first day, right. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Now I'm going to read something out of the Bible for you that God told his children to do if they love him. Because everybody said, I love God. Until God started telling them what to do. I, I don't know now. So let's read what God said do. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So you got six days to work. One, two, three, four, five, six days to do all the stuff you got to do. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. What is the seventh day? Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So sis, did you hear that? Read that again. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So there's a lot in there. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Your God. Right. You understand? So if we're going to church on the first day, are we going with God or are we going against God? You're going against them, sis. Right. And what we need to understand is that the pastors go. Let's get let's get the uh, let's get uh, knowledge. The pastors who who pastor these churches, who stand at that door, invite you in. How you? What's your name, sis? How you doing, Sister Michelle? Come on in here. Show now. Your shoulder is dressed nice today. Come on in. I oh, see you got your pocketbook with you. Good, good, good. Cause the collection plate gonna be flying today. Right. Glad you got your wallet. Come on in. And you sing songs, and he makes sure he get the best. That's why I know people that play play piano for churches. They make big money. You know why? Because if he's really good, that church won't come on over here. Bang, 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 bang. He'll leave there. They work. I know dudes that only work on Sunday. Right. That's and the only job they do is play the organ or piano for church. I know people that do that, right. and they make big, they work one day a week. Maybe two if they're going to a church and they got to do a rehearsal, but that's going to be extra money. Maybe. But they make big money working one day a week. Why? Because that place is not made to teach you about God. It's made to get your feelings revved up and people fall all out and then your money fall out. But don't you worry about picking that up. We got you on that. Read. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. So the Bible is going to tell you what a preacher should be doing. This is what a preacher should be doing with the people that come to church on the seventh day, not the first. Right. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. So the Bible said the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they, the people who come to the priest, all of us, should seek the law the laws of God out of his mouth. But when you get in there, you know what they tell you? The law is done away in Jesus. And right. just to have faith and sit down and you ain't gotta do nothing. That's like somebody telling you, you need a job, sis. You need to get some money to sit down on the couch and let Jesus bring your job. You gonna die on that couch. You gonna starve. They gonna put you and that couch outside on the streets. If you want something, you gotta get it. Get first Samuel, uh, first Samuel. First Samuel uh, one and uh, one and I think it's one and three, one and two. I 
right, look, sis, let me get you one law. Okay, I know you love God. Let me get you one law. Deuteronomy 22, let me get you one law so that you can get right with the God I know you love. Right. All right, read. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So, the Bible, and we're going to get you the law, finish that out, and tell you how God feels about people who say to hell with what that Bible just said. So, the Bible said the woman should not wear that which pertains to a man, and then he turned to the man and said, and you should not wear what pertains to a woman. You don't wear her clothes, you don't wear his clothes. Now, I'm going to give you the easy part first because we always get that right. What garment do women wear that God said men shouldn't put on. What kind of clothing? <laughs> Come on, sis. What kind of clothing do men, do women wear that God say, man, don't put that on? Dad, you know it's a dress. You know why, and you know why it's confusing? Because of L-G-B-T-Q-R-S-Y-T-U-Z, all that, because it's acceptable here. It's acceptable in this land. This is Babylon the Great, the Bible calls it. That's right. Babylon meaning confusion. This is the land of confusion. Right. That's why when I ask people, what does a man wear that a woman shouldn't wear? And what does a woman, oh, no, oh, because right. this is the land of confusion. Right, right. That's why when we ask people, uh, uh, does God love everybody? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't. This is the land of confusion. But the Bible is clear. A man should not wear a dress. That's right. So now, drum roll, my sister. What article of clothing do men wear that women, as ordered by God, should not wear? Okay. Bam! Drop a bomb. She got it right. She got it. And you jump right. And that's honest. That's an honest spirit. And God can work with an honest spirit. But he can only work with the honest spirit that's willing to change. You are, sister, an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right. You are an Israelite because your history, the prophecies that God said would happen to his people, happened to our people. And you are a descendant of those people. Your father. Look on the sign. Look real. Can you see it from there? Come on up here, sis. This is important. Where, which one would your father be considered today? Your dad. We'd be a so-called African-American. It's on the back of your flyer as well. Back on the bottom. Which one would your father be considered? Haitian, Puerto Rican, black, American black. Which one is it? American black. Now what does it say beside American black? Because American black ain't in the Bible, sis. Right, right. But Judah is in the Bible. And you know who else descends from Judah? Now when we tell when we tell you that you are from the tribe of Judah, we're not telling you that you are only spiritually connected to the tribe of Judah. We're not telling you that uh uh, if you believe in it, we're telling you that whether you do what this Bible says or not, sister, you're going to be judged by it and that you are a bloodline descendant of the people that wrote it, right. the people that lived it. You are a blood descendant. Now, I'm going to give you one man that you are a blood descendant of out of this Bible. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. Light, brother. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Who is the Lord, sis? Who is the Lord? What's his name? What do we call him? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Right. right, right. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord, King of Kings, right? Read that again. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. That means the Bible said it is evident that the Lord, Jesus Christ, is from the tribe of Judah. Right. Just like you. Just like you. And if you're a so-called black person, what would Jesus be considered today? Jew, and you know, uh, right, he would be a black man. Right. Did you know that Jesus Christ was black? You, did you know, could, if somebody said, prove it, could you do it? Could you pick up your Bible and say, this is where you go, and I'm going to show you Jesus is black. Yep, I'm going to show you right now. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to show you anyway. This is important stuff, because this is, a, not knowing this, is why we have drill music. That's right. That's why they, that's why they don't see Jesus. That's just a, that's a op. That's just a nigga. Don't nobody care. 
Right. And you know why? Because I killed three niggas last week and ain't nobody been around here yet. Yep. Right. Read. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. Yes. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the only reason that there has to be a revelation of Jesus Christ is because the enemies of God and you and me and all of our people did that. Right. That's the only way you got to reveal it. We they, they took this and covered it up with that. So that's why we out here. We out to uncover this crap, this devil. This is a real man named Caesar Borgia. Right. And to expose the real Jesus Christ of the Bible. By example, nation is family. Nation 